All right. Um, please join me in welcoming Head of Social Impact at Riot Games, Jeff Pearl, um, back to the stage as he discusses how his company utilizes the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals to inform overall impact strategy and fundraising efforts in support of cause, cause areas that appeal to their global player audience. Here's Jeffrey. Hi, everybody. Um, as previously mentioned, my name is Jeffrey Burrell, and I am head of social impact at Riot Games. Uh, I want to talk a little bit today about how we're utilizing the United Nations SDGs to drive uh, player value um, wherever they are. And so a little bit of background on if this is working, potentially. Um, OK. So I'll just do a little song and dance number until uh, that works. There we go. Perfect. Thank you. So uh, a little bit of background on me is I joined Riot about nine years ago, very long years ago. Um, but I absolutely love my job. Um, I have never been in the games industry before this, but I've been like a lifelong gamer. And as soon as I am done with this talk, I will be reading the Diablo 4 patch notes. So if you have any uh, way to, to condense that for me, I hear they are quite long. Um, <laughs> and as I said, I, I really love my job because we're able to have the unique privilege, my team and I, to touch all parts of the company. Not just with the games itself, but with esports, with other forms of entertainment, with our community. And we're also able to do that globally. And so I'm here to talk about how some of our values-based approach can really drive meaningful impact, not only, like I said, with the communities that we serve. We're in about 26, 27 now uh, regions around the world, um, but also how we can serve the players. And so prior to uh, Riot, I was at uh, the Gates Foundation in Seattle. And during that time, I really understand the importance of both understanding the problem that you're trying to solve, but then even more importantly, on who you're trying to solve it for. So I'm gonna walk you through a little bit on uh, what I'm calling an outside-in strategy. Um, and as some of you may know, our company goal is to become the most uh, player-focused game company in the world. And that extends both in and out of the game. And I think everybody here can agree that without a very core, dedicated, very passionate, and yes, sometimes opinionated, group of players, none of us would be at this conference. The, the power of our players and the global community is something that only other industries could dream about. So <laughs> when I joined Riot, I was asked to create a very player-centric approach. How can we serve our communities in ways that matter to them? Um, and so I stared at a whiteboard for about five months, just waiting for inspiration to strike any day now. Uh, and then I started to really dive into some of the great research that we've all been exposed to here at this conference already, and really deeply starting to understand how and why video games can have a unique and meaningful impact directly in the lives of our players and how we can move that needle. And so we came up with our social impact pillars. Uh, these are areas that we think after a lot of research, we could actually have unique and meaningful uh, impact into the world. And as you can see, we have education, citizenship, opportunity, and our latest one is sustainability. Um, and it's not on the slide, but each of these have various sub-goals, theories of change, associated budgets, portfolio analysis, all the glorious documentation you could want. Um, but I'm going to save you from all that today. But this is still what I would call an inside-out approach. This is taking what we care about and wanting to engage with the world on the issues that we think are meaningful and resonant. And yes, there's a strong space for this. This is where most, and I think how, a lot of companies should show up and engage with the world. We can't be everything to everybody. But there's always a question in the back of my mind, which was, what's the other road? What's the path that we don't travel? We know what we care about very well, but what do our players care about? How do we engage them on these issues? And then, to make matters worse, is how do we do this globally? Because, as you can imagine, talking about values across cultures and across regions is particularly difficult. Because what matters to us here in New York is very different than those in Brazil versus Japan versus the Middle East. 
And so how do we start to engage and understand on that? And what insights are we missing? And where would we even begin? Now, we teased it a little bit with the intro to this talk, but we needed a framework, a glorious, colorful framework. And yes, it was the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And so we found this really great solution in that we wanted to use the SDGs as a model for understanding our player values. And, and we really wanted to know what they cared about and why, and in particular, how we could in, engage with them on these issues locally. And so it allowed us a, a way to communicate across borders and across languages to develop a common language with what our players are caring about and on areas that are doing good in the world. And so here's a refresher to anyone who could use one is this is the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. It's essentially, as I heard earlier today, the world's to-do list. We're about halfway there. There's still a lot of progress to be done. So please uh, look into these if you haven't already because there's some amazing work being done that we can all support. And we found that these SDGs were not only broad enough to be used globally, but also specific enough that we could hone in on what particular issues uh, mattered in each of the regions that we are in. And once we had this, then we're like, well, how do we then start to understand how our players relate to them? What do we even do? How do you start to, to engage with this? Um, and it might not have been the most robust strategy, but we decided to ask them um, and, and see if they would tell us. And so let's dive into some of the research. Um, look at my glorious methodology. For those of you who have like doubled into statistics or, or dipped your toes, here's a little bit about what, who, and how we started to engage. And we surveyed players all over the world um, and used this data to understand, you know, like I said, how they're starting to identify these issues in their own regions. And this created really deep ways for us to understand that hyper-local impact is different per region than on a global level. Because what we might think about here when we talk about some of those higher level ideas could show up very differently in all of these regions. And so we didn't want to just pick one issue and push it out to them. We wanted to engage with them and see where these trends were developing over time. So without further ado, behold, data. Uh, this is some of the data from our two previous surveys. We did one in 2019, 2021, and we're looking to do a refresh very soon. Um, and these were the top results across the globe. You can see quality education and job training is number one year over year. And so this was very important globally. We had good health and mental well-being show up in the top two again over our last two years. No poverty, inclusive and uh, sustainable employment opportunities, strong human rights, gender equality, and so on. But I have one very major caveat with all of you in that this is our data for our population. Your mileage may vary, given the genre, given who you're engaging with, given your own particular players. Don't take this as all value for what players care about globally. It's not. It's only indicative of kind of like our unique audience. So I just needed to clarify that. Please use this, adapt it, do what you will with it, but don't assume that it's a monolith for all gamer culture. But what was really interesting with this was this is what we saw globally, and then we could dive into what we could actually see regionally. And so going back one slide, we saw that quality education and job training was one of the top three values globally, but in Brazil, it was massive. This is by far what they really cared about and wanted to engage with. And this was a trend that we saw growing year over year. So in 2016, 17, and 19, we saw that poverty was starting to trend, or that um, uh, education was their top rated quality. But in 2017 and 19, we saw a pretty significant jump in no poverty. Now this is reflective of, of course, the world that we're in. But this was also pretty indicative of, even though this might be, oops, this might be number two, it's a growing area, so how could we look to address this in that local market? Continuing on, we can see some of the differences in Europe. So here, my darker bars are Europe West, a lot of the uh, European Western uh, countries. And then we have the European Nordics. These are based on our servers, but we're just kind of conflating the data a little bit for ease of understanding. 
And so here we can see some of the differences as well. And again, quality education and job training, good health and well-being. But for the first time, we saw that EU players have become way more environmentally conscious. And we saw combating climate change and environmental conservation appearing for the top five for the first time across Europe. So this is cool, right? This is giving us like an ability to understand, and engage with our players on local matters that matter to them. But now we get into the really cool stuff. We've done this for a couple times now, so we know that those categories are so broad, we actually wanted to double click. What do they really mean when we ask them these? And so some of the ones that we see over and over, we decided to ask our players again. Now, when you said health and well-being, what do they really mean? And when we asked them that, we became really surprised, but also then not surprised, is that players overwhelmingly chose mental health as the issue that was most important to them. But what was fascinating for this was that this was global data, even in areas where there was still such a high stigma around it. They weren't willing to talk about it with their parents, they weren't willing to talk about it with their schools or classmates, but for some reason, they were willing to disclose that, yeah, mental health is an issue that I really want to help get addressed. And then when we cross-reference this information with the WHO data and more, we realize that it's not a gamer issue. It's just a young person issue. You know, 90% of the, the world's uh, young people play some sort of games, and it's not. It's just young people around the world, and they're needing help, and they're needing support. And so this was some of the ideas that we thought we could really lean on. And then the problem was, you know, how do we actually utilize this? So they have really, the SDGs have really informed how we can create unique and meaningful impact, hyper-serving our players on these local issues. But it's one thing to then understand this, and it's another to be able to act on it. I absolutely love cheeseburgers, but I cannot have cheeseburgers every day. I have to have a quinoa salad sometimes, according to my wife. But now we have to act on these things. And so how do we actually apply the results? And one campaign that I wanted to share is what we called our Sentinels of Light campaign a few years ago. We actually invited players to submit ideas directly to us on ways that they or local nonprofits are engaging with their local communities on these issues. Um, they had to select some of the SDGs that they were addressing with this, um, and then would share with us examples, data, stories, video, et cetera, on ways that either they are engaging with their local communities or they are working with this nonprofit that is. And we were able to select 10 or 30 nonprofits across 18 countries, and I'm very proud we hit all six continents. I'm sorry, Antarctica, we will get you next time. And we gave them all a $10,000 general operating support grant. We just wanted to support the great things that they were doing already. We chose uh, 11 cause areas through the SDGs and had over 19,000 uh, player submissions for these local initiatives. Um, we are very, very proud of that because that was a way to also then connect local nonprofits to others in that region that they might not necessarily have known about before. And one more example I just wanted to share is our annual player voting campaign. I really got to get better at naming these things. I'm not super good at marketing. Um, but essentially what we do is we will invite players to purchase an item to support a charity pool online uh, every year. So the standard buy this item goes to an, a, a nonprofit of their choice. But what we do is we actually pool all of the money that we raise annually. And at the end of the year, we utilize the research from the SDGs and understanding what our players care about to identify and select three hyper-local nonprofits that are actually addressing the issues in that region. So for example, in Brazil, we knew that we had to find something regarding sustain or like deep education initiatives. We knew that we needed to do something regarding uh, no poverty, and so we looked at how we could help the favelas. We looked at uh, countering tuberculosis. Uh, and the breakouts that were happening there. So we did this with all of our regions around the world, and then the players in those regions are able to vote on which one of the three nonprofits is making the most amount of difference in their own mind. So the winning organization, quote unquote, got 50% of that donation pool, and the other two got 25% each. But all of them got tremendous amounts of intention, engagement, and interaction from our global player base and wanting to learn more, wanting to engage. And one of my favorites was 
Uh, I heard a story from one of our, our nonprofit partners that they saw a huge spike in Google search engine queries because a lot of folks hadn't heard of them, and then that actually maintained. And they saw a huge amount of people signing up, wanting to continue to donate and to share with some of that. And so, you know, we, we do this, uh, hopefully, knock on wood, every year. Uh, last year, we raised and distributed roughly $6.2 million across 83 NGOs in 28 countries. 770,000 players participated, and we got a lot of uh, impressions, like I said, kind of sharing some of that sunlight for some nonprofits that might fly under the radar. So learnings. This is the big one. Take a picture. Uh, what worked was the outside-in approach. Like I said, it, 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 whether you're leading a company, whether you're a part of something, just keeping in mind that what you personally might care about is, is deeply meaningful and, and really can drive a lot, and that's what guides me. But it's also important to listen to those who we're trying to help and serve as well. And so understanding and letting them be part of the conversation and letting that inform your decision making is absolutely paramount. And then framing locally makes a world of difference. I, I thought that was pretty clever. Um, but uh, if you do frame things locally, there's a lot of research out there that shows it actually connects people more closely to the mission. It aligns them and says, oh, this isn't just something that's happening online. This is something that's happening in my own backyard. And we saw high amounts of engagement and resonance with that. And then lastly, stronger affinity and higher engagement. Going local in this example actually had a lot of uh, intangible benefits. For example, I, I mentioned Brazil. And there was several non-endemic media that don't even cover uh, video games, but they caught wind of this campaign because of some of the nonprofits that we were supporting. And we just got a, a ton of earned media worth a couple hundreds of thousands of dollars just talking about it and saying it was, you know, cool. Um, and so that's, that's pretty neat, you know, when we're able to kind of like break the boundaries uh, beyond just games and into kind of like the, the general uh, conversation uh, with folks in Brazil. But if there's anything I want you to take away from the talk, it's, it's this, is that players, and we all know this, have an absolutely allergic reaction to anything that is perceived as inauthentic. If you're coming in and you're like, hey, kiddos, hey, gamers, you know, and, and kind of coming in, uh, everybody in our, our culture can see that coming a mile away. So it's really, really important to be authentic and to spark a sense of pride and, and collaboration with your community. You can't just like force your ideas with them and say, this is what we're gonna do. You have to invite them to conversation, co-develop and find out what it is that we can do to actually build together because they're the ones who are gonna be the agents of change beyond what any company could ever do. And so with that, I wanted to say thank you and happy to take any questions that you may have. Uh, yeah. Sure, so the question was, was if I'm gonna just paraphrase that a little bit, it was, uh, were the SDGs, is this type of research, this type of uh, insight applicable to not only other game studios, but then industries beyond, and then how would that eventually change once the SDGs are, are sort of towards their goal point in 2030? Um, the, the second question is a lot easier, so I'm going to start with that one, which is hopefully then at that point the UN or, or other sort of uh, very significant thought leaders will come out with sort of like new initiatives of like, like I said, the to-do list for the world. So I'm very confident that there's going to be no shortage of problems uh, for us to, to focus on and address uh, going forward. In terms of uh, applying this and, and utilizing it, I, th I think absolutely. I, I don't think that there was anything you know remarkably difficult about it. It was simply getting out there and wanting to understand. The hard part was we did have to alter the language of the SDGs a little bit so that people could kind of understand. Because if you're not familiar with that, we had to then give types of examples. So when we said like education, 
and you know, good jobs. What did we mean by that? So we used a couple of different examples um, just to make it very broad so people could understand. That was the only hook, it, but it's just dependent on your audience and who you'd be serving. Thank you, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was thank you. Maybe. Um I'm glad you caught that. Uh yeah, so uh, the, the, the question was, was like, okay, now that we know that mental health is like a very large issue, how can we actually meaningful help? And I'm out of time, so I'm going to make it quick. But you should check out uh, riotgames.com slash mental health. We have some resources up there. But I, I want to share also one kind of quick story was um, you need to meet people kind of like where they are, and sometimes they don't even know that. And so, like I said, we want to be really natural and, and authentic and kind of not be overbearing with that, but, but sort of meet them in the hot moment. So there's two organizations that we really love and work with and supported for a long time. One of them, if you haven't heard of it, is called Take This, uh, and I simply cannot recommend them enough. They have all these resources out there for gamers, for streamers, for content creators and studios. Um, and so we've partnered with them to try and like identify what gaps are missing and how they could support that. The other was with um, Crisis Text Line. And so what we noticed was we could partner with them. So if a player after a game were to say, hey, I'm, I was playing with someone and I'm actually kind of worried about them, or a player themselves would type in and say, I'm, I'm really not doing well, um, we would connect them to a crisis counselor immediately afterwards, like through, through that. And, and with that, we've been able to kind of take you know, hundreds of, of players over the last year from like pretty a, a hot moment to a cool calm. Um, and, and personally, I kind of just tear up every time I, I, I sort of think about that. So we try and find ways to interact with them and not just say, hey, here's a big thing, but like really providing those behavioral nudges right and when, where they need it. But I encourage you to check it out and happy to talk more afterwards. I think I'm at time and they're going to bring the hook. So thank you all so much. I appreciate it.